All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can add equipment or items to our character summons. Um, now, this can be a great way to give it a feature or characteristic it wouldn't normally have, um, and this should work for all summon types, uh, whether it's a necromancer skeleton or a druid wolf, etc. Um, however, I will be helping out a, a fellow user uh, who requested that Neely splash damage from a previous mod um, be included onto his necromancer skeletons, so that's what we'll be editing today. Um, so the first thing we'll want to do basically is just go ahead and to extract the, the needed files for this edit. Um, now all the programs and tools I used uh, in this video are linked in the description below. Uh, definitely check that out as well as the website uh, for Diablo 2 Resurrected Modding uh, and info. Uh, you can find links there as well. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and open up that cask view program, which is what we're going to go ahead and use for this. And um, we'll get started. So with that open, we're just going to select the open storage option. We're going to go ahead and select our Diablo 2 Resurrected game folder here. And uh, once that's done, then we can browse for the actual game files. Uh, now these for us are going to be stored in data, data, global, and Excel. Now once here, uh, these are the four files that we're going to need to take out. And you also will need to reference these files if you already have a mod. And for example, maybe you're trying to do the same thing by add a, a melee splash effect to your summons. Um, you're going to need to look at these two files for that mod. And uh, there'll be more info about that later. But let's go ahead and extract the uh, four files we need and get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my mod folder. Um, and I already have some text in here just for kind of visual display of the a demo and things, but um, you might not have anything there. Don't worry about it if you do. Again, if you don't have this folder at all for your mod, uh, please check the link in the description for a guide on how to set up modding for Diablo 2 Resurrect. Um, with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and just drag those four files over. So again, that's going to be armor.txt. We also want the monequip.txt file, which is where we add our item to the monster. We're going to need our mon stats file so that we can edit the monster to have a to hold equipment. And then finally, we're going to want the unique items file. This is going to be the actual unique item that our monster is holding. Um, so with those all extracted, we're done here. We can go ahead and close that out and move on to step two. So the first thing we want to do uh, in regards to the item is go ahead and create the base version of the item so that unique has something to spawn with. So again, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the tools linked in the description below, um, which is a sheet editor for Diablo 2 for the text files. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. So we're going to go ahead and open up armor.txt. Again, this is going to be to edit the base item. And all I want to do here is kind of expand this row. Um, and then we're going to lock the top row uh, just so as we're scrolling, we can still see the, the header information there. Um, for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and copy a, a quilted armor. Um, it's just a nice low level item that we can equip to our, our summon. Um, and uh, we just want to give it a base so we don't have to type in every column ourselves. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that column, go here and select the clone option. Um, if you're using a different program, you might need to add and copy and paste the row yourself, but we're just going to use the clone row option. So we're just going to clone that one row. And now if we go to the bottom here, we can see that it's cloned it to the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and rename this just so we know what we're editing. And we're going to rename it Summon Armor. Um, so the first thing we'll want to do is go to the spawnable section. Um, this controls whether it can actually drop in game or be sold from a vendor, etc. Since we want it just for our summon, we're going to go ahead and turn that to zero, which will make it not spawnable. Um, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do um, is just head over to the item code. Um, so this is the unique code that um, identifies the item for the game. And the only requirement is that it's three digits or three characters, um, and it's not used by something else. So we're just going to go with the old ZZZ, um, and nothing else uses that, so there should be no issues there. Um, I'm also going to go just over here to the norm code section, and we're going to change that to ZZZ also, which is uh, just signifies that because it's a low-level item, the normal version of this item 
uh, in normal difficulty, we'll be using the ZZZ code. Um, so anyways, that's all we need to do there. Um, all the rest we can ignore. Um, as long as you've made those changes here, we can go ahead and save that. Uh, so now we can move on to step three, which is creating a unique version of that item. And that's gonna hold all the stats and everything that we care about. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and open up our unique items.txt. And we're gonna do the same as before. We're gonna go ahead and expand the row a little bit. We're gonna lock that first section. And then we're just going to do a search for quilted armor. Um, again, this is just to grab a base uh, that's compatible with our base item that we don't have to edit every field for by creating a new one. So now that we've found the quilted armor, uh, the unique called gray form, we're going to go ahead and just clone that row as we did last time. And that's going to go ahead and add it to the bottom. Now, because this is a unique, this is going to be the actual item name. Um, we don't care about anything super fancy, so we're just going to call it Summit Armor again. Um, but we do want to change this ID column here to match for the next ID in the sequence. So for us, it's going to be 401, and we're good there. Now for the level and level requirement, we're going to go and change this to 1 just to make sure our skeletons can always use it, although I'm not sure that's strictly needed. Um, and then finally here for the code section, we do want to give this the code of the base item we created earlier, which again is the ZZZ code. So the unique version of that new armor is now going to be this. Um, now in the character transform and inventory transform, because this item comes with them and you might not have a sprite or something associated with this new item, it will crash if we don't delete these. Um, now, if you have a, a sprite that you've made for the item, uh, because maybe you plan on using it on other characters or things like that, then you don't need to worry about that. But for us, we're going to delete it. And then finally, we're going to come over here to the prop one section, which is all the properties and stats that the item normally comes with. Uh, because we're making our own, we're just going to highlight that all and delete it and we're gonna put in our own custom stat here. Um, so now is the first time we're gonna to need to look at another file to see kind of what we're adding. Um, and that is gonna be the properties.txt file. So I have to open here in another window just to make it kind of convenient. Um, and for us, again, we're adding a melee splash effect to our summon. So if I go to the very bottom, I can see our melee splash property here, um, which is what we'll copy. And that again is just called melee splash. So if I go back to our unique items, that's what we'll want to put in here for property one. And now we need to tell it for the par one field, which is the first parameter to use, what to do or what skill to use. And so for that, we're going to refer to the second file here, which is the skills.txt file. And if we go look at that and again, scroll to the very bottom, we can see our melee splash actual skill uh, is here. And the ID for that skill, which is what we care about, is 365. Um, so we're going to want to put that in our unique item for the parameter to use. And now for the min1 field, this is going to be the chance to cast this skill. For us, we want a 100% chance to cast, so it always happens. But maybe you want 50 or something else in between. Um, and then finally, for the max1 field, this is going to be the level of the skill we're using. For our melee effect, we only want skill level of one. It doesn't really increase with level. Um, but maybe you're adding Blizzard or some other random skill and you want it to spawn with a certain level on that. Uh, you can set that there. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is a skip uh, a step I accidentally skipped uh, is in this no limit section. Um, we want to go ahead and set the no limit to one for our summon armor. Uh, this will allow more than one unique uh, for this to spawn in the same game. Um, again, this is needed so that if you're doing it on a summon that can have more than one in the game, more than just the first summon gets the special item. Uh, but with that said, um, we've made all the edits we need to do here. Um, so we can go ahead and save this file and move on to the last step. Uh, so now that we've created our base items, we've extracted everything, we've created the unique version, now we can finally add it to the summon and, and reap our rewards. Um, so for that, we're going to go ahead and open up the mon stats and mon equip files. 
and I'm just going to open both of those here. And the first edit I would probably do is going to be in Monstats. So uh, what we're going to want to do is find our necromancer skeleton in this example. Um, now I already happen to know the um, name of this skeleton, but you can just do a, a search um, and search for skeleton or, or whatever you're trying to find. For the necromancer skeleton, it's called necroskeleton. So if I search for that, I'll see this listing here for it. Um, and this is important for two things. One, we need to know the name uh, because we'll use that in the monster equip file. But two, if we go ahead and lock this top row so we can see all the, the headers again, and then we highlight this to make it easy to track, we want to look for the inventory column. Um, this is going to tell the game that, hey, this summon is allowed to wear items that has an inventory. So if I go over to here, which happens to be CC, um, and uh, highlight that, then we can see that the Necroskeleton does not have it enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and set it to one to enable it to wear items. And then we can go ahead and save that. We're done with that file. And now finally for the monster equip, we're gonna go ahead and expand this. We're gonna lock those rows and we're gonna clone just whatever one we have here. And for the name, instead of Shadow Master, which would be like the assassin um, skill, we're going to go ahead and change it to our Necroskeleton, um, because that was the name in our monstats.txt file. Now for the level, we can go ahead and leave it at zero. If you have lots of equipment that you're assigning to a monster, um, maybe you want to have different levels so that they get different equipment as they level up. But for us, we're just adding this item. Um, for the item one, this is going to be the code that we created our item with. So again, for us, that's going to be ZZZ. So that's what we're going to put here. And that item was a quilted armor, which goes on your chest or torso. So for the location in that loc one field, we're going to put horse for torso. Um, now for mod one, this controls the quality of the item. So as you remember, we made it unique, um, which in this field is a quality of seven. So we just set that to seven, and now it'll always create a unique version um, of that custom item for the necroskeleton. So we can go ahead and save that, and we're all set there. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and launch the game here, um, and uh, we'll see you back in the game with the working commands. All right, and now we've loaded into the game, and now we can go ahead and see our hard work in action. So we're just going to go ahead and go over here, go planes, find a monster kill, and raise up as our undead army. And I've added an effect, so you can see the shockwave coming out. This is just a visual effect, uh, basically, for the video um, to show that it is, in fact, adding a custom item to our, our summon here. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and I apologize for the quality ahead of time, or actually, I guess, behind the time, as it is my first video. Uh, but thank you for sticking around to the end, and uh, enjoy.